Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the third video in the Kotlin um, Sudoku Android uh, tutorial series. In this video, we're going to actually set up some sort of backend for our game. So um, basically right now we have all of the logic for our game happening in this Sudoku board view class. And we kind of want to pull that out so we have some sort of backend and kind of pull. We, we never want to have all of the business logic happening in a view. Basically the views should, their responsibility should be just to display information and then also send something like tell the back end to do something and then redisplay information once the back end is done doing that. So first things first, what I want you guys to do is go to this build.gradle file and make sure it's the app build.gradle file and then go to um, dependencies and then down in here um, just put this uh, implementation android.arch.lifecycle.extensions uh, one point um one point one point one I guess that's the newest version and I'll actually uh put this in the description so you guys don't have to copy or don't have to write it down from the code you can if you want but so yeah just do that and then press sync now okay and then once Gradle is done building um we can actually start writing some code so first things first, we're actually going to not write any code yet. Um, we're just going to lay out our project a little bit better. So let's create some packages. Um, the first one is going to be called game. The next one will be called view. And then the next one will be called, uh, what is it, view model. Um, so basically what the game package is going to be is where we're going to put all of our backend code so that it's kind of separate from all of our view code. And then we can actually take these two views that we have and put them in our view package because that's going to be where all of our activities are, all of our custom views are. Um, so just press refactor once you drag those in. And then we'll also create another package inside this view package. We'll call it custom. And that's where all the custom views will go. So our Sudoku board view for now is a custom view. We might have some later, we might not. Okay, and then we need to create a view model. So let's do right click new Kotlin file and call this play Sudoku view model. And basically the job of the view model is basically it ties into an activity or fragment lifecycle and then stores information and like the information that is to be displayed to the screen um, in the view model. So that way we're not actually storing any state of our app in an activity because what happens is, you know, somebody leaves the activity or it gets paused or something and it might get destroyed and we lose all that information. Or if somebody, for example, flips their phone or tablet, the orientation changes, and all of our data is lost. Well, view models store that and keep it um, while the activity is still alive, and that allows us to actually um, basically, like, for example, if you did flip your screen, it wouldn't actually um, lose all of the data like it usually would. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So what we can do is we can create a class here, and we'll call it play Sudoku view model and make sure it inherits from view model and then just alt enter to um, import that and then we're going to go back to this play sudoku activity and we're just going to create a new variable in here um, and we'll call it view model and this will be view model or sorry play sudoku view model play sudoku view model view model okay and then you might have to import that again. And then what we want to do here is just create our view model. So whenever we whenever we create a new play Sudoku activity, it's going to grab the view model that's tied with this activity. So how we do this is we do view model providers dot of this referring to this activity, and we do dot get, and we do play Sudoku view model, and then colon colon class dot Java. So basically what it no, what it does is it's grabbing the view model associated with this activity that is this view model. So what we can do is actually share view models between fragments or just basically have a view model specifically for this activity, which is what we're doing. Okay, so now that we have this view model, what do we want to do with it? Well, we want to store the state of our game in the view model. So actually what we want to do here is we're going to create um, we're going to create a val a value called um, Sudoku game and it's just going to be a Sudoku game object so really what we're going to do is have our Sudoku game be our backend and that's what's going to store the actual data so it's the view model is really just like um, we need to use it since it's kind of 
tied into Android itself, so it's really nice, but we're actually going to put all of the processing into the Sudoku game class. So let's just create a Sudoku game class, and we'll call it, we'll just do class Sudoku game. And in here, we're going to have some things called um, live data. And what live data is, is basically it's something that we can subscribe to, and then once we're subscribed to it, whenever we add, when, like whenever we basically call on a live data, we say we want to post this value to it, and whatever is subscribed to it will get notified with that value, and then we'll update. So basically, this is how we keep our connection between the view model and the view very nice. Basically, what we do is we subscribe to these live data objects, and then whenever they're updated, our view sees that and updates its own fields. So what we need to have is basically we need to have a selected cell live data and that's just going to be a mutable live data meaning we can update it and what we put in here is a pair of integers so really we're going to store instead of storing our selected cell in the view like we did before we need to have parentheses here um, like in the view like we did before we're actually going to store it in a sudoku game and basically when we tap on the view it's going to send the information to the sudoku game the Sudoku game is going to get updated, and then it's going to post that data back, and then the view um, will actually update itself. I know it seems kind of convoluted, but this really makes a lot, a lot of things nicer because the we're kind of decoupling everything and making sure that the the Sudoku view itself is not where the game processing is happening. So what we need for that is we need um, some private variables: selected row um, equals negative one and selected call equals negative one so in here we need to create an init block basically this is going to be um, where we like this, this is called whenever the sudoku game is created so what we're going to do here is we're just going to post our to our live data we're going to post the value and that's just going to be a pair of selected row selected call so right when we create the object it's just going to post it and then the Sudoku board view will know, okay, this is what the selected row and the selected column is right now. And then what we need is we need um, something to update our uh, row and column. So update selected cell, and we're just going to put in row integer call integer. And so this is just going to tell, okay, you know, we want to set um, our selected row in here to row and our selected column in here to call. And then what we want to do is we want to post um, the row column back to our mutable live data. And then our view is going to listen to that and, and, and make the changes necess necessary. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's actually hook this up and make it work. So let's go back to this place Sudoku view model and import um, here. So really all we need right now is this Sudoku game in here. It's really nothing else. So we'll go to this play Sudoku activity and let's add um, an observer to our stuff. So view model dot Sudoku game dot selected cell dot live data dot observe. And then we want to do this and then observer lambda. So basically what we have here is we have, we're basically observing what's happening to the selected cell live data. So whenever we, whenever we write that post value to our selected cell data, this observer lambda is going to get called with that value. So we're just going to say update um, selected cell UI. And then we can pass in what it actually gives us. So what we need here is a private function. This is going to be update selected cell UI. And this will take, um, let's see, cell. And this will be a pair of integers. And it will be nullable because we can send null on the um, live data, but what we just do here is actually get rid of these brackets and do cell, so equals cell dot uh, question mark dot let. Basically, this block of code will only run if um, this pair is not null. And what we want to do is we want to say Sudoku board view, I think that's what we called it, dot update selected cell UI, and we want to pass in cell.first, cell.second. So this is going to be the row in the column. So let's go back to that Sudoku board view class. We still have it up here. And we need to create um, a function at the bottom here 
called um, update selected cell UI. And this will take a row integer and a column integer. And what happens is, let's see, we do um, selected row equals row and selected call equals call. And then we do invalidate like before so that it will redraw everything um, in our UI. Okay, perfect. Now we just need to do one last thing. We need to actually make sure that when we press the Sudoku board view, when we tap on the Sudoku board view, what happens is we, um, we send that information back to the back end, which will then be updated and then we'll post that value back to the view and make sure it's changed. So to do this, we need to actually um, do something with an interface. We need to create an interface. We'll call it um, on cell, no, on touch listener. And the interface is basically just going to have one function and it's going to be on cell touched. And this will be a row and a column. Okay, so we have this interface now. And what we want to do is we want to do, okay, private var Um, sorry, private late init var. Well, now let's do a null. So private var um, listener, and this will be um, an on touch listener. Well, it should be Sudoku board view dot on touch listener, and it's going to be nullable, and we'll set it equal to null to start. And then we'll create a function down at the bottom again. We'll call this register listener. And this will take in a listener. And this will be a Sudoku board view dot on touch listener again. And then we'll do just this list this dot listener equals listener. Okay, we're good to go here. And then in our on touch event, instead of setting selected uh, selected row and selected column, we'll just create two new valuables that valuables variables. And this will be possible selected row and possible selected call. And then what we'll do is instead of invalidate in here, we'll just do listener dot on cell touched, possible selected row, possible selected call. And there we go. So the reason that we do this interface is that we don't really want to pass in our whole activity to this. We'd rather just have some sort of like function that gets called when we do on cell touched so we can just actually make this inherit from sudoku board view dot on touch listener yeah it should be that let's import this really quick on touch listener and then we need to make our function this will be on cell touched and this will be row int call int and what it will do is it will take the Sudoku, uh, it will take the view model, view model dot Sudoku game dot update selected cell row column. Okay, and then we actually need to make this an override function because it's um, overriding the interfaces function. And one last thing, <laughs> this is quite a lot of code I know. Um, up here we want to just do um, Sudoku board view dot register listener and we'll pass in this. So let's run through it again, just the logic of what's happening here. Basically what we have now is we have this view model which is tied to our life cycle and it won't go away when the activity is paused or like rotated or anything like that so we can kind of keep our state um, valid. And then what happens is we have this Sudoku game in there and this is going to store the state of our board and the state of our game. So basically it stores the selected row and selected column for now and it'll store other things later. And what we do is we call the update selected cell in here whenever we want to update the cell and then it will do it in the background like in the back end and then it will post that data back and whatever is listening to it will get updated and what is listening to it is the views so we have this listener right here this observer it's actually called and it when it gets that posted value it's going to call update selected cell ui which will go into the sudoku board view and actually update the ui which will update the values in the board view and then call invalidate to redraw the view. 
So let's just run this really quick and make sure that it works. Okay guys, we can see here that we have our board view um, still working correctly, but now all of the logic is kind of, again, decoupled from the actual view itself, and the view is really just displaying data that is coming from our backend. So that's really what you want to do with every app, if you can, is basically make the backend its own thing, and then really the, the UI and the activity components and things like that are really just data displayers for what is happening behind the scenes. So that's actually a huge thing that we just did in this tutorial. Um, next video, we're going to actually go and um, actually make some sort of board in the back end so we can display values on the screen. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a like. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I know this was kind of a, a big tutorial, um, kind of maybe hard to follow. So if you have questions, please leave them and I will try to answer them. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.